Stan Jibalisco here. Some more about a regenerative receiver design and how it works. Uh, basically, uh, some questions that a viewer asked me, and chances are if one person goes to the trouble of emailing me to ask these questions, uh, other people probably are wondering the same sorts of things. So let's look at the same circuit that I showed you in the other video about regenerative receivers. There's one thing missing, though, yet from this. This is, right as we see it here, just a radio frequency amplifier circuit. But what we need to do is provide some positive feedback to cause the thing to oscillate. We need to orient this internal coil here in the correct direction so as to produce positive feedback so that this circuit will break into oscillation, uh, producing the beat frequency oscillator effect that we want in order to receive signals such as Morse code, phase shift keying, single sideband, frequency shift keying, and those sorts of things. Uh, so let's just get to the questions here. First of all, he doesn't understand the reason why we need these two non-variable capacitors here. And I think those might, that might be a good subject for another video. These capacitors are called blocking capacitors. That is these two capacitors right here right there. What that means, blocking, is that they are intended to block direct current but allow the signal alternating current to flow through. So as the radio frequency signal comes in here, it can pass through that capacitor easily to get onto the gate of this field effect transistor. But if this capacitor weren't there, if it were just a direct short, then what we would in effect be doing is simply we would be defeating the entire bias of this resistor because this gate would be directly grounded through this coil like that. That would make it so that the bias on the field effect transistor provided by this resistor wouldn't be correct anymore. We would end up most likely with a field effect transistor operating in some sort of a pinch off or cut off situation the gain of the of the circuit would be greatly reduced and we would not see nearly as good a performance as we would with this capacitor here there are some situations where we don't need capacitors like that it depends on the type of bias for example if we wanted to supply a negative voltage here instead of grounding this then we would want to get rid of that capacitor and also get rid of that resistor. But in this design, this capacitor prevents direct current from flowing, but it allows the signal to go through. And the same is true here. If this were directly connected to the output, the output, chances are, is going to be a headset here or a, a low impedance input to another amplifier. If we don't have that capacitor there, then the 12 volts DC on this uh, drain of this device is going to get shorted to ground and the result is that the device isn't going to work at all. So this prevents the direct current that plus 12 volts from getting shorted to ground through whatever is in this output there. So these are blocking capacitors. That's what they do. Now there, there are other uh, reasons to have capacitors in circuits for more or less the opposite reasons. Those are known as bypass capacitors. And we could in fact include a bypass capacitor in this circuit right here at the source. We could put a bypass capacitor here to help ensure that the source remains at signal ground while having some DC potential with respect to ground provided by that bias resistor right there. That might actually improve the gain of this circuit a little bit and maybe we should just leave that in there. 
in that case they call that a bypass capacitor because it bypasses the AC signal to ground rather than letting rather than blocking direct current it is intended to bypass the signal instead sort of a subtle distinction there he wants to need why uh, he wants to know why we need a DC voltage well quite simply without this DC voltage here this circuit would be dead it would be like a boat without a motor or a boat without any propulsion it would be dead in the water this is an active amplifier circuit and by active it means it needs this 12 volts to derive the energy to produce the signal amplification you can't amplify a signal without some external source of power like that and that is why we need the DC voltage then he asks why do we need to ground the circuit with the resistors twice I presume he's referring to this resistor and this resistor well we're not exactly grounding it twice we're not grounding the circuit twice we're grounding the source through this resistor so that the source can attain a direct current voltage with respect to ground so this resistor actually prevents the source from being directly grounded similarly here with the gate this resistor prevents the gate from being directly grounded and instead allows it to float at a DC voltage of uh, some level or another so that's why we have these resistors and as for grounding things twice well if you count up the number of grounds here we got one two three four five grounds in this circuit but they're really all the same connection this symbol right here refers to the common ground or chassis ground in the circuit and in a printed circuit board that would usually be a foil run that goes around the outside of the board so these are these are all shorted together we could just as easily um, get rid of all of these ground symbols except maybe for that far one over there and then just short all of these out like that it worked just as well maybe we should extend that down just a bit for elegance that'll work just as well but the the gist of it is that uh, whenever you see this symbol right here that uh, indicates a common ground or chassis ground for the circuit as opposed to a symbol like this which means a direct earth ground a ground rod pounded into the earth if we had separate symbols like this at those five points originally instead of this then technically we'd be talking about five different ground rods driven into the earth and that would be ridiculous in a little circuit like this and it probably wouldn't work very well either uh, so I, I hope that this helps to clarify what happens here the signal comes in now as it flows in it's amplified the radio frequency signal is amplified here this is a um, capacitor here that serves as a blocking capacitor if it weren't here then this drain would be directly shorted to ground and the circuit would cease to function so we need that capacitor there that's another blocking capacitor this feedback coil causes this whole amplifier to oscillate which by the way will reduce its gain considerably so we might need amplification stages in the output to get that gain back but the purpose of the oscillation is to provide a heterodyne or beat between the incoming signal and the frequency at which this capacitor tunes the circuit so that we can get an audible tone say for Morse code maybe 700 Hertz is a comfortable listening pitch this uh, circuit might be tuned to say oh let's just for the argument sake of argument say 3.510 megahertz and then a signal comes in at either 3.5 um, 3.510 that's the kilohertz 3.5107 or 3.5093 <laughs> 700 Hertz above or below this frequency to produce this tone at the output and that's how 
this regenerative radio can receive a Morse code continuous wave, so-called CW signal, without this feedback, you wouldn't hear anything. The Morse code wouldn't sound like anything at all. You'd hear dead silence. So hopefully th this uh, will clear up some of the questions. And again, I will at a future time make some videos uh, having to do with bypass and blocking capacitors and the distinctions between those. Uh, meanwhile, I would recommend that anyone uh, who needs to learn more about how all these little uh, things work, get a hold of a copy of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. And start right at the beginning and hopefully you'll gain a better understanding at that point uh, as, as you go along in your quest to become an electronics guru. I lay no claim to being such, but I'd like to be someday. Stan Jabalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.